First step in this process is to relocate the inverter charger, which you see here. It's currently located on the forward wall in the engine room, which just so happens to be right under one of the cockpit drains, which you see the drain line there running right over the top. Water and, and electricity don't generally mix very well. In fact, I've already replaced an inverter charger due to water damage, so there's plenty of reasons to relocate it. Now the new location that I picked out for the location for the in inverter charger was on the opposite side of the engine room. Actually it's on the back side of the sink area in the aft head. Here you see it here and it also is the mounting position for the um, exhaust tube which you see there. What I had to do was uh, I sistered on a piece of plywood there to give me enough face area to mount the inverter charger there and then I'm going to relocate that plumbing piece that you see. My next step was to relocate the galvanic isolator which you see here. It's mounted on the opposite side of that protrusion that forms the sink area in the aft head. With the galvanic isolator mounted I then proceeded to move both the shore power supply line and the line running from the inverter to the main panel. Here you see that going on in various steps. Looks pretty good, right? Uh, except for one small thing. I forgot that by code you're required to have a positive disconnect within three feet of the shore power. With that said, I undid the wiring and installed the positive disconnect. Here you see it. With the AC side of the installation complete, I moved over to the DC side. Here we need the same thing. A positive disconnect, and the addition of a fast acting fuse which you see both of those here. With the connection of the two out line into the positive bus bar that completed the repositioning of the inverter charger. I'd like to take a break here at the channel from all the action and ask you if you enjoy what you see here on the channel go ahead and hit that subscription button we'd really appreciate it. Also, give us a thumbs up. The positive feedback is always enjoyed. After a long day and a half in a hot 100 plus degree engine room, it was evening time and it was always good to just kick back and enjoy the scenery here in Deltaville. One of the things that really took some time was as I was going through the engine room I took out abandoned wires, lost wires, homeless wires, wires that were the wrong gauge, the wrong length, and the wrong color. Here you see some of them on the floor in the, in the main part of the boat. Like every boat job this one took considerably longer than what I thought it would. One of the reasons is that every line that was run had to be custom cut the length then the end had to be stripped off and you had to have a new lug compressed on the end and then heat shrink proper color put on. So in fact every line that's run is custom handmade. Here you see the hydraulic compressor that I used to put the lugs on. Since I was working on that side of the engine room, I decided now is a good time to put the wire pass through from where the mask goes into the aft head into the engine room so that I could pass in all the new electronics and wind generators that I mounted on the mezzanine. Here you see that hole in the, in the wire pass through that I'm using. And I took out a little more wire again. As part of the 12 volt primary system upgrade, I decided to install a Victron battery monitor. This essentially tells you energy in, energy out, and how much is left. Here you see the head unit mounted in the optional 
mounting box that I have placed at eye level in the galley. Next week, we'll finish the 12 volt primary system, show you the shunt installation and a wiring diagram. So tune in to what's going on in our next updated video.